Okay, so this is how we work, uh, how we find n behavior models. It basically limits as x approaches infinity of, you know, polynomial functions. So we can do this without factoring. All you have to do is look at your leading terms. We know that x to the fifth climbs way faster than x squared, especially for positive x values, okay? So you can kind of cross out all these other ones. Just look at your leading terms, 2x to the fifth over 3x squared. This function for really large x behaves just like 2x to the fifth over 3x squared, which we simplify to 2x cubed over 3. So for really big values of x, this limit is going to be the same limit as this 2x cubed over 3 function, which is 2 thirds x cubed. Now we can confirm that graphically. This thing should approach infinity because x cubed approaches infinity. So we graph that function in here in our y equals, and you can see as you go to you know infinity, your your function just increases without bound. And uh, you know we can kind of zoom out, and you can see as you approach negative infinity, um, the limit approaches negative infinity, so it goes down without bound. Now one when you have the same leading when when the powers uh, of your leading uh, you know terms there are the same, uh, something else happens. So and we're only concerned for really big values of x, so we want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this function g of x. We just look at our leading terms: 2x cubed over 5x cubed. Now even for really big x values, the x cubes cancel out, you get the limit should be 2 fifths. Now let's confirm that graphically. Put this whole function in your y equals, okay? So we type that in, you got 2x cubed, right? Leading terms of cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1 divided by 5x cubed, you know, plus x squared plus x minus 5. And you can see that when you graph this, uh, and actually a better way to do this would be to use tables, which uh, I'll do in the next one. But graphing works just to see like what's going on here. Now uh, I uh, I should set my window my y min to negative one, so I'll uh, accidentally get an error right there. So let me set my uh, I have one for the min and negative one for the max. I should swap that. So I'm going to put negative one for the min, one for the max. Because again, I think I'm going to get two fits if I when I did it algebraically. Now I'm going to hit the trace button and notice how as I head towards infinity. I'm at 0.38, then 0.39, then you know you keep going. You, you eventually get to 0.399999. I approach 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is just the decimal equivalent of two fifths. And the same thing happens as you approach to the uh, negative infinity, you, as you go to the left forever, because this function, this 2x cubed over 5x cubed function, that thing approaches two fifths, approaches two fifths as you go to the left forever. So we can kind of reset our window here to start in the center, but I don't care about in the center. I don't care how it looks I'll wear in the center. I care as it approaches negative infinity. So as, as I go to the left forever, you can see I'm like 0 0.40, and you know you just keep getting closer and closer to 0.4. So your limit as x approaches negative infinity of this guy uh, is negative infinity. And I'm going back to, to the first one. I forgot to do uh, the limit as x approaches uh, negative infinity here. It's a cubic function, so uh, that was negative infinity. So back here, uh, our next example. Here I've got the top power is a lower power than my bottom one. Now this is the opposite of the first example. In the first one I had, the, fir the top had a higher power than the second. So as x approaches infinity, x doesn't climb as fast as x squared. So if you kind of just take your leading terms, do some algebra here, our end behavior model is the limit as x approaches 2 over x. But as x gets really huge, you're dividing by a really huge number. So if you do 2 divided by a million, that's basically nothing. It's a really tiny, tiny fraction. So as we get take really big x values, uh, 2 over x becomes really small. If you can confirm that graphically here, we put y equals. Uh, we put our original function in here, OK? Just to show you that, that our end behavior models are correct. You do 2x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 5 plus x plus 4. Make sure you use parentheses there. And uh, I want to go ahead and just, uh, you can see this graphically, that, that things could be really close. Um, and it approaches 0. But if I want to, I can just use my uh, table functions as well. So you know, w you keep that uh, same thing in here. Um, we only care about the really big infinity. So that, that thing between uh, those vertical asymptotes you get like close to the y-axis, for the small x values or the x values close to zero, we don't care about that. All we care is the limit as x approaches infinity, which, you know, that thing starts to hug the x-axis, it gets close to zero. It happens the same thing as you approach negative infinity. 
So since our end behavior model does that, and it's a good model for our you know, function in general, the limit as x approaches infinity of the original function is zero, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity is uh, also going to be zero. So in general, what we have is if you have the power on the numerator is bigger than the power on the bottom, the numerator climbs way faster than the bottom. So you get that your limit as x approaches infinity will be infinity. Of course, you have to watch out when you get even or odd functions when you're talking about as x, as x approaches negative infinity. But um, in general, you just divide your leading terms if you and you treat your general function as the the quotient there. So if the power of the denominator is bigger, which means the numerator will be smaller, you'll, your bottom will climb really fast. So you'll be dividing by really huge numbers, and you'll get that in general, if your denominator has a bigger value, the limit approaches zero. Now if the powers are the same, if your power of your numerator and denominator are the same, what you do is you take the quotient of your leading coefficients, which is what we did in example two. You had 2x cubed over 5x cubed, it's no coincidence that the, the limit was 2 fits or 0.4. So here's another example. Do 15x cubed plus a bunch of stuff over 3x, to, uh, 15x to the fifth, and, oh, you know, plus some stuff over 3x to the fifth plus a lot of stuff. And all we care about is the leading terms there. They cancel out. We should get that the limit as x approaches infinity is 15 over 3, which simplifies to 5. I'm going to confirm that graphically. 15x to the fifth plus 3 fourths plus 2x plus 9 divided by 3x to the fifth plus 9x minus 4. And now, if you look at your table values, I'm just going to go ahead and ask for really big values. So first, you know, 100 at 1,000. You just keep getting closer and closer to 5. When you put in a really huge number, you know, we, we got 5. So we confirm that there. And that'll work for any time the powers are the same. So if the power of the top is bigger than the bottom, limit approaches infinity. If the power of the bottom is bigger than the top, the limit as x approaches infinity is zero. And if the powers are the same for your numerator and denominator, the limit is the quotient of your leading coefficients. Now knowing that, you should be able to uh, try the polynomial uh, in behavior models. Um, that's numbers uh, 35 through 38 and 40 through 42. So good luck.